listening to the Thoroughbred Podcast, an elite business leadership podcast. All right, so welcome. Thanks, brother. To the Great Thoroughbred to see Podcast, an elite leadership business podcast, right? right? So uh, obviously I have a love for thoroughbreds and we were Googling the definition and it literally, it's an elite uh, business person yeah. and uh, leadership Life is leadership, right? That's right. Yep. So super excited to have Chris Swanson on. Uh, I went to school with Chris. Yep. Um, Bob Chris, Cats rule. Bob Cats, they're pretty good. <laughs> um, but we went to school together. Yep. You've spoken at our team retreats. That's right. Which has always been awesome. Yes. Um, we've always just really jived. That's right. And there's also a deeper connection that I'm going to share with you guys in a little bit. Um, going back to... Yeah. The past sheriff yeah, of Genesee County yeah. and his son. My work dad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Your work dad. My, my wife says that I always have work spouses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, let's just jump right in. First sure. of all, thank you for your time. Right on. Right? Uh, time is a valuable asset, and so I certainly appreciate you coming out yeah. today and spending some time with us. Uh, and I think I'm just going to jump right into the let's very go. first question. For you, what is leadership? Define that for the people out there. Well, people talk about, you know, you're a born leader. I, I believe, obviously, people are born, but not everybody's <laughs> born a leader. And uh, I think everybody has the potential to be a leader. But I'm telling you, it's 99-1. I think 99% of the people go through life just kind of coasting and following. But there's that one percenter who's got the ability, the desire, the hunger to want more. And uh, I th I don't think either one of them is bad. There, there's, there are people that do great just being a good uh, team player, so to speak, but they don't want to coach. They don't want to first base manage. They don't want to be there on the front lines. Leaders kind of develop that. And then if you really have the hunger, then you're going to become what I say from the beginning, a servant leader. I mean, you serve others, but you lead them into the fire. Amen. So we talk about that a lot on our yep. team, on our real estate team, right? I mean, love, serve, care yep. is how we started out. And then we added the third thing was earn yeah. and it wasn't a money thing yeah right so it's it's our legs love earn grow serve and really yep. the earn part was you have to earn that's right people's business you have to earn yep. people's trust you have to earn people's yep. uh, it, you know people's companionship right um so i really love that and yeah. i and i love this leadership thing because people always say oh you're such a good leader i go no i'm a growing leader that's right that's and, right and you never yep. stop growing in right. a leadership role so Knowing that, knowing that you were, I mean, you've done a lot of awesome things. I mean, we, we went to Haiti together also. Right? Haiti. Spent a I lot love of, Haiti. Spent a lot yeah. of time in Haiti. Shout out, yep. shout out to Rocky. Rocky Lewis. Martin, I hope you're watching from Haiti. We he, love you, man. He is going to be watching. And we got to do right some on. stuff with Rocky. We I know gotta, it. We got to do know some it. stuff. I'm trying to get him back to the States. Amen. I'm praying Bring that he gets him. back to the States because he's going to come right here in Fenton. He's going to be a great, great uh, position of authority here yeah, in Fenton. He's going to be working it. with you. I'm, pro I'm prophesying it. It's going to happen. It's going to, well, it's, yeah. it's already said. Yeah, Rocky. It's I already <laughs> told you when we're walking up the steps there on the ocean in Haiti, I said, I got a prophecy. I'm going to tell you there's going to be a day you're coming to the United States. You know, I meant, I thought that when I met him and just a yeah, great guy, right? Great dude. Um, so, so let's go back to that being in Haiti together. What yep. drives that? I mean, you've done a yeah. lot of trips, right? That's I went right. once. Yeah. And uh, I, I, Loved it. It was super impactful. Uh, but you've been a lot. I've been to Haiti more than I've been to Port Huron. Where, what's Port Huron? That's way out there. <laughs> I say that because um, we went to Haiti uh, with the local church, but not as missionaries, but almost like um, uh, like an advance, we call it in our business. You go there to see the field, to figure out how you can f you can help and, and, and maybe bring other people there. And the reason I go to Haiti is for a number of things, but when you go to another place and you give – and they can't give anything back, that teaches you selfless leadership. And so when we went to Haiti, I got a picture of you and LaFontaine. You're holding this little kid, man, and just the eyes that you had, the heart that you had. This little kid can't do anything for you. They don't even yeah. care who John Wentworth is. Yeah. They don't care who Chris is. And they they just, just grab you. And that changes a man's chemistry. That changes a woman's mindset. When you go to those places that can't give anything back, and there's no other worse place in the Western civilization than Haiti when it comes to conditions. Yeah, well, I think in general, on a daily basis... Um, we as human beings yep. should not be looking at, well, who, who can I put into so that I can get something in return? Yeah. Uh, instead, we should but just people be... people do that. I, uh, uh, they do it. I know. Well, society teaches us That's so right. many of these things. And so we talk about society a little bit too, because we have our faith foundation, yep. right? Yep. Um, oh, I'm not a perfect man. I don't know if you are or not. Only on Monday afternoons, even number days. <laughs> Perfect. I like well, that. I'll see you next Monday. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Heck but, no. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 we're massive screw-ups in training. 
Amen. Yeah. And, and so knowing that, yeah. that foundation for me anyway, as I travel through life, right, is so important to me because I can go back to it. And I didn't have it yeah. at all until probably five years ago, right? Yep. And so knowing that I can go back to that and have that foundation rooted in God, I think is uh, just an amazing thing. But it frees you also. It does. It's liberating. Uh, amen. You bring up, can I make this comment yeah, about 100%. when you talk about earn? You know, that earned leadership role or that earned love that you're asking for people, I think going to the mission field allows you to be more acceptable to people's, I don't want to say judgment, but they're, the fact that, that I don't want to ask anybody anything. I want them to come to me because I've done so much for them and I've earned it. That to me is the best. And when you go and start asking people for stuff and they do it, if their intentions aren't pure or they do it because they have to, like, why would you want that? Well, I want somebody to knock on the door say, listen, Wentworth Group did something for me and I never will forget that. Yeah. Well, you know, we're in an amazing role, right? Yep. I mean, we've been very blessed to be yep. where we are now. Who knows where we're headed? Right on. Um, uh, because the Lord yep. is, the Lord will lead that. You know, it's yep. like this big, beautiful building we ended up in. People said, well, you should go here and you should go there. You check out over there. And I'm like, I'm just going to sit back and watch and it happen. Ri- ride yeah. the wave and yeah. let the Lord lead the way. Yep. Um, and so inside of that, you know, it, it's a funny thing. We have a great culture inside of our business. And I know you've got to have a culture. That's at, right. At your, at your, That's right. What do I call it? Is the sheriff's office. The sheriff's yeah. office. It's not yeah, a that's business. Right. Uh, it's a business, yeah. maybe. But to have that culture yeah. inside of right. the environment, yeah. how do you police that? Ah, touche. <laughs> how do you? How Let do, me just say this. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to give the posi- get the position as sheriff on January 6th in 2020. Uh, I'm the 40th sheriff. Ironically, 2020 adds up to 40. Wow. Is you're that good ironic or what? Too. You must yeah. have went to Grand Blanc. I did. I did. <laughs> and uh, But I couldn't do math. That's why I work for the government. Anyhow, <laughs> when I took over at 1201... I went to my prayer bench and I gave it all up like Solomon did, asked for wisdom and discernment. That's the first thing is the leader has to be right here and has to be right here Amen. before they can lead anybody. So that day I took office, I wrote an acronym on the board and the acronym is I N A M. It's not about me. You're right. Because when it's not about me, that means the focus is on the mission or the focus is on the mission field. And then under that, I said, we're going to do three things and make it simple. You know how you just got to make it simple, right? We're going to honor the badge. We're going to lead and we're going to have fun doing it. Now, that doesn't matter if you're in police work or if you're in a real estate company Amen. or you're racing horses or you're selling nails at Home Depot on aisle eight. If you can honor whatever you're doing and you can lead whatever it is you're leading at that moment and you can have fun doing it, there's nothing that you can't do. Well, and what's better than any of that? Right, exactly. You know, I mean, we, we get on this big thing and we go back to society. Society teaches us, oh, you got to have this and you got to have a fresh car and you got to do all this crazy yep. stuff. But that will never fulfill it someone. Won't. No. Right? So the society sustainability of, of, you know, trying to fill yourself up yep. with, a, with an item, yep. um, you know, how, how do we help? I mean, you're a parent, right? A husband, a father, yeah. you've got two great boys. How do you help? I mean, my son's here, right? A 20 year yeah. old. How do I help him? How do I help my two young children at home? Right how does Stacy help her kids? She's got three kids. Yep. They already, I mean, they're already doing great because they're leading snuggle sacks, providing for the homeless. That's amazing. But in general, yep. the people listening, you know, whether you think you're a leader or yeah. not, if you have children, you're a leader. Without a, without a doubt, everybody listening has a leadership role. Amen. The key is, are you being an effective leader or are you leading at all? Well, and I think to do that, you've got to you've got to first understand yep. it. You've got to reflect upon right. it, and then you've got to embrace yeah. the fact that you're leading your children. So help us. Yep. How do we? I think twofold, right? Us as yep. adults, as parents, as brothers, as leaders, as husbands, how do we look for fulfillment? Yep. Right. And then, but, and how do we transfer that to our children to make sure that they're not trying to find fulfillment in someone else or they're not trying to find yep. fulfillment in, you know, thinking that they have to buy a, a, a fresh, something material, a fresh whip, right? Yep. Anything material. How do we help them see that? Well, first of all, my, my foundation is Christ. You know I mean? That's, that, it's my fulfillment. I don't need anything other than that. Anything else is on top of that, a bonus. And then I go right back to my family. You've got a great family. Even if it's family that maybe is, uh, you know, is, is not always the way you want it to be. You've overcome some massive obstacles. Your family doesn't have to be blood. Your family can be friends. Your family can be a church group. Your family can be friends. Whatever it is, you have to have that foundation where you have that 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 uh, uh, that love that people desire. We're human beings. We desire connection. Amen. We desire interaction. So building that foundation for me is the key thing. Is like I think relationships are key as a medic. 
I've been a medic since I was 20. I've often wondered when I see somebody about to die, that 30 seconds before they die, what are they thinking about? Like, what's going on in their head? It's not about their car. I'm guaranteeing it's got to be something about relationships. To your second point, now that we have these people that are watching us, whether little kids, our spouses, our friends, our, 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 our subordinates, whatever it is, if you give the example of what you expect of your people, they will follow, no matter what that example is. So by God's grace, when I was eight years old and I saw my sister got a goldfish from the Shawasi County Fair, I wanted a horse. I bought my first Welsh pony at nine and a half cash, 150 bucks, because I knew where I wanted it. I knew what I wanted, but I had to earn it all those years. And that kind of spilled over in everything that I've done. Even that purchase of that pony, Molly was her name, has made me the success that I have today because I just duplicated that in Ironman. Ironman number one, on my bike, 114 or 112 miles on a bike. I said at mile 56, I had taped a little pack of Skittles on my handlebars. I said at mile 56, I'm having my Skittles. Skittles. And I'm watching it. And I'm watching my odometer go. So you're like Marshawn Lynch eating Skittles on the sidelines. Ah, that's right. I never thought about that part. But you have to set little benchmarks and you gotta you gotta you gotta reward yourself. And you can't get it unless you earn it. So everything you do, everything has to be a competition. I I'm I wasn't an athlete in high school. You were. But I became an athlete later in life. And that means that that competitiveness that was always there had to be kind of uh, brushed off. But I think every leader has to be a competitor. You have to compete to be a great husband. You have to compete to be a great mom. You have to compete to be a great business leader. You've got to compete because if you let one day go, somebody else has took your spot. Well, I think it's important, too, to recognize who you're competing with because yeah. nine out of ten times you're yep. competing with yourself. Without a doubt. Right? You've yep. got to wake up every yep. day and go after it. And you've got to have that desire. Hunger. I think, I think what brings that desire, though, because for, for me, right, I mean – Initially, I was just trying to eat, right? Yeah. I mean, when I entered this business, I had no money, I had nothing. And 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 you know, what a blessing. Yep. And what a journey it's been. But but now my desire isn't the same as it used to be. Correct. Now it's yeah. for me now it's other people, right? That's, That's right. where I get my fulfillment is having all these people like you said having these relationships. Yep. I think are vital. So then going back to our kids, right? Because they've got everything at, at their yeah. fingertips right now. How do we help? And I understand by leading by example, yeah. right? But how do we really help them nurture good relationships? Because for me, I know, you know, you mentioned my past. One of the greatest things that I did was cut my family off yeah. certain people in my family yep. and so you mentioned they're toxic amen yep. whether it was family or whether it's friends yep. or whether it's co-workers i think setting boundaries yep. on who you're spending time with is ultra important well, I think that you are the sum of the people you surround yourself with. 100%. Not only how you act, how you treat people, your finances, your mindset, your business. So first thing I would say is who you surround yourself with, who do you spend most of your time with? If I pulled off your phone and said, who are the top five people you call on a regular basis? That'll tell me what kind of person people yeah. are. And I think when you surround yourself with people or cut people off that are in that, it's that circle, that's going to be the, the start of, of that. Because you know I always say rising to the top, nobody got John where he was without a bunch of people lifting you up. Amen. And so you keep surrounding yourself with those people. And then you example that like, like I always grew up and uh, I had a, a big separation. I love my parents, but I didn't hang out with my parents, friends. Okay. And my parents certainly didn't hang out with my friends, my kids, friends, which are 18 and 21. Now they dig us. Like I'm part <laughs> of their life and I made it relatable. Like my, my kids come over. I was always the house to be at because I wanted to show them what a relationship was without having alcohol, without having dope, without having sex without having stealing and swearing and, and disrespecting. Now my kids are men. They're on autopilot and they were friends with our friends and I was friends with their friends and it all comes back down to relationships. I mean, to answer your question, you've got to surround yourself with people that are going to build you up and cut off the people that are going to tear you down. Uh, so I always say, you know, and I think this is a great exercise actually for people and it might sound a little bit harsh at first, yeah. but literally like if I focus on who in my life, these are the only two people yep. I want to be around me, people that I can have a positive impact on yep. and people that can have a positive impact yep. on me. Now, now is that selfish I'm not looking for a positive impact no. in a manner of material. Right. I want a positive That's impact right. on me. That's to right. To continue to grow me and also to challenge me, though. I yeah. think the other part of being a leader, and you said it, was you've got to be willing to be challenged. Yep. You know, and I'm blessed just inside of our business alone yep. to have people that will come to me and say, "Hey, John, I don't think that was I don't think that was right. You know, I don't think we should have handled that that way." And I, and because I am willing to look listen. at that and yep. listen, then I can learn from it and I can grow yeah. from it. So, but why are people so, you know, I, I see ego, this. Ego, man. It's ego. Nobody wants to be checked. 
And if you're not checked, you're not leading, you know? And I'm going to tell you, there's probably people that come into your office with their own personal problems. That's a leader. And I will tell anybody, if, if nobody around you comes to tell you their problems, you're not leading them. And if your ego is so big that you don't think you can relate to them, then you ain't relating. It's ego. Mic drop. Boom. <laughs> because ego, yeah. ego yeah. is a killer. Yep. I mean, it really is. I think ego yep. is one of the biggest killers. And, and so often it's um, people don't even realize I it. know. I know. That's why the mission field, to me, I've been going to the mission fields with my boys since they were 13 years old. So I'm going on my, my, my ninth year, okay? So check this out. My son, just two days ago, with the Rock Church, uh, was invited to go to Cuba for, for 10 days. Now, he's 18 years old. I just said two days ago, I said, hey, listen, you guys got to figure out where you're going to go on a mission trip. Because to me, it's just as important for them to go on a mission trip than it is to get their college. It is to go, go work hard. Because to me and my family, serving in a foreign country away from the United States where you have no conveniences and you get bare bones, that sets the tone for the rest of the year. Even if you go for one week, I say that because I don't have to teach my kids that anymore. They have a desire to go there. Right. And so when you talk about that ego... That's why when you serve people that can't give back, it crushes that ego, it gut checks you, and it makes you relatable. Well, we talk a lot about inside of our business about the number one thing you can do to improve your own business is go help someone else. Absolutely. You know, I think that it's just one of those things. You know, people always say, well, give to get. No, just give to yeah. give. And then give some more and yeah. then give some more. And you know what? At some point, obviously, yeah. there's going to, you know, people are going to pour back into you. Yeah. And I, and I think that's just so, people are so focused on getting an immediate result. That's right. Instead Make the of, sale. Yeah. Just be attached, yep. being attached to the process, doing the right yep. thing over and over and over. Like I, you know, I never set out to, to buy this building. Right. I didn't set out to serve 500 <laughs> people. I set out to eat a sandwich. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But just by doing the right thing over and over and over and over and over, like you said earlier, duplicating that. See, John, I call what you just said value in, in the mindset of a leader today in the 21st century is value, value, value. And if you like what I did, this is what I'm offering. Amen. And that goes for parenting. That goes for marriage. That goes for relationships. Like I can't expect Jamie to do what I want because I'm your husband and that's what the Bible says to do it. I mean, that, that, that doesn't work. No. What I want to do is I'm going to pour my life into Jamie, pour it in, pour it in, pour it in. She's going to want to do things for me because of that value and vice versa. I, I think a good example of that is, right, you'll see in a relationship. So we've talked leadership. Let's talk about husband, wife. Yeah. Right? Because I think that is something that um, is challenging. Right. I don't care who you are or how. Right now, it's another I human mean, being. It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to survive with another human being. But but what you just said, I think, is really important because I, I had this experience, right? You know, uh, a couple years ago, got sober, um, yep. you know, really poured myself into the gym, yep. going five days a week, personal yep. trainer, 530 in the morning. Never once did I say to my wife, well, you should go to the gym too. That's right. Now, it was on my mind, yep. not not because of me, but because I realized what it was starting to do for yes. me. Yes. But never once did I say, well, you should go to the gym. Yeah. But because I went so much, she said, I should go to the gym. There you go. And I think, but that's just one example, but I think doing that mm -hmm. in everything that we do in life, um, and again, just showing up, doing the right thing, others will follow without a doubt which is leadership amen and getting back to that relationship you talked about it how long you been married uh december was 11 years right on don't get it twisted i was i i wasn't forgetting i just want to be accurate right December on. 20th was 11 years man i'm telling you i i would look at people that have the years that i have in marriage when i was young and think they got to be 100 but my wife and i are going on 26 years of marriage amazing. and she looks just as good as the day i met her and you don't but <laughs> i look amazing which is exactly why she stayed with me for 26 years i mean come on but uh i still date my wife i still try to portray the image that first attracted her i try to better myself as a husband as a friend as a as a lover as a as a, an encourager every day i can't just say you know what i got a quarter century into this gig you know you're gonna be with me for life i can't every day is a new day and then when i was on the dope team we would have this saying, if we got an eight ball of cocaine or we did uh, a half a brick of something and we'd get a bunch of money and somebody in jail, the next day we'd come in and say, that was yesterday's dope. And that's where you got to think about success. That was yesterday's success. Just to clarify, 
he is I worked a worked poli- on a dope team. Yes, he, yes. He is a sheriff. Yeah. He seized this. That's right. I did okay. buy my first eight <laughs> ball of cocaine at 21 years old out of a side window in Montmore's Township. And literally, when I bought it, I thought, is this legal? Like, did I just do this? I was in Grand Lake last year, man. And to clarify, I just he was it. undercover. I was undercover. <laughs> he sold me to dope like nothing else, man. I'm like, hey, this guy can buy dope. That's right. They never used to talk to me in high school. Now I'm buying dope. One thing I want to make sure we do, Christian's going to throw up the Thoroughbred Podcast image here behind us in a minute, um, but he didn't know that, but now the he does. The power of suggestion. Exactly, right? But one of the things I want to do inside of this podcast, right, because it is about elite leadership. That's right. And obviously, we've got a business, and you've got a career, and, and so on and so forth, but you know, I, I like to dive into these pockets. So yes. we talked about faith. We talked yep. about being a leader. We're talking yep. about husband and wife stuff, yep. right? What's one thing from each of these categories that you can leave with somebody? You know, um, I, I was blessed, you know, yep. to meet the Lord, never had any relationship yep. with God in my life. Um, and I can tell you when, when I met God prior to that, I thought I had it going on. And I, thought crazy? I, was, I thought I was doing some shit, man. Oops. I thought I was doing some stuff. Chris always gets on me for swearing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I did, I thought I was doing right. some stuff, right? You were empty. And, and I fell into this. Truth be told, I was asked a few times by a few different people to go to this retreat, and I finally thought, well, it'll be good for business. I'll yeah. meet a lot of people. Well, I met the Lord, yep. and uh, extremely impactful. I cried for two days straight. Um, and I'm going to get to something with this. I left there on fire. I led that men's group for, for two years. Um, saw some amazing things happen inside of other people. Heck, my dad, his grandfather, you know, um, as I went through this, was darn near dead. He was on his deathbed. He was on a ventilator for two weeks. Came out of there, moved in our house, and I had to wash. I mean, I had to yeah. bathe this man that I basically hated my whole life. Wow. And I never Servant could have, leadership. I never could have done that, though, without forgiveness. That's right. Gosh. And so I think when we talk about faith, yeah. because people hear God and they hear Jesus, but what is the foundation of that? Because I know one thing that is impactful is forgiveness. Yeah. How does how can that fill someone up to let go? Oof. Well, first of all, Jesus was love. Love. And when you forgive somebody or seek forgiveness from somebody else, you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for you. And anybody who's experienced the poison of unforgiveness every single day and every week and every year, you and I all know, and everybody listening, that that never goes away. A song will trigger a memory, a visual, a street, a and it just conjures up the same thing. For me, thing. it was a smell. A smell. Yeah. So you had to go to him and say, I'm not going to excuse what you did, but I'm going to forgive you. That's not for your dad. Well, it was for my dad and my mom, right? So, yeah, I mean, it was exactly. A, it was a, but you it, had to let it, it go for daily your double. sake. You know, it was, uh, we were in a moment where we had this opportunity to take all the stuff from our past and put it in a yes. box and put the box on the altar. That's it. Let it and go. And man, that was, po- yeah. that's a powerful exercise. That's tough to do, bro. Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. I mean, I, but, I but, but the act of forgiveness, I want people to understand is an act of love because you and I have all done things that are worthy of forgiveness in our end. 100%. And so what you receive is what you need to give. And if you argue against it, take it from the people who have let it go. It's liberating. Let it go. Surrender. Surrender. My buddy Heath Evans, who will be here uh, visiting us, Super Bowl champion, great man, great leader, very very well uh, founded in yeah. Jesus Christ. Now I don't know what his past is, um, but that's one of the biggest words he says. Yeah. You know, inside of um, inside of the NFL, right? All, yeah. all, we see these big, physical, yeah. hard hitting men. He said the ones that do the best when they join an organization because he played for Belichick. Yeah, he played for Pete Carroll. He nice. played for um, I don't know some other guy, but oh, Sean Payton. It was the ones that came to New England and surrendered. That's it. Those are the ones whose careers blossomed. People that were average players in the NFL became superstars. People that are average players in life that's right become superstars Preach when you surrender so I think it's awesome. Speaking of preaching, it's not weakness. No, it's strength. strength. It's strength. So speaking of preaching, because you do give me heck for swearing, and I'm a do. I know. I do. I'm gonna tell you this. So. I had a guy, and this before I met God, his name was Keith. He was working on our house, and he said to me, you swear a lot. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. He said, well, the Lord came to me and told me to not swear anymore. And I said, well, he didn't tell me that yet. <laughs> <laughs> but the, you know, oh gosh. But but I'm not a preacher, right? Right. right. But I'm a disciple, and this yeah. is my message. So right. um, I will. Well, let me try. challenge you on this. I, I, yes, you dang it. If there's if there's one thing, if there's one thing that I could tell you, 
to make your testimony even more powerful than it is today. Would you want me to tell you that? You already have. <laughs> That's it. So are you going to tell everyone else? I'm just going to tell you. Then don't do anything that's going to tarnish the value of the lessons that you've learned as a child. And if swearing is a distraction, it's a discipline you got to get out of so you don't distract people from the message. You son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> but look, again, being a leader, I like that, right? That's right. I mean, it's I'm, I'm yeah. ingesting And that. I know yeah. for a fact you don't hate me for saying that because no, heck you're no. a leader. You could shake me when we get outside oh, of this room. Well, you don't... <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Shoot me, you yeah. can shake. No, I'm good. I'm right. good. So we've talked about Christ, right? Yep. That foundation of forgiveness. Yep. We've talked about marriages. What's something you want to bring to the table? Something that's impactful, um, that has impacted your life, or you've seen it impact others so that the people that are listening or watching yeah. can walk away with literally some things that... So so for me, right? One of the things for me is I see people chase money all the time. Yep. And why do I recognize it? Because I did it, Yeah. right? I mean, I remember pulling a horse trailer with a Cadillac Escalade that I couldn't even afford. Right. And, and so I've been there, done that type of thing. It didn't fulfill me. It never, it never sustained me. It never helped me sleep good at night. And so that's something I think that I'm always trying to help people understand the young people on our team. Money's a great vehicle. That's right. right. It gives us choices. It's a vessel. It's a vessel. It's not who we are. Yeah. You know, real estate isn't who I am. It's what I do. That's right. So, so, so how can we help people see something that they can walk away from and implement inside of their lives right now? Well, I operate in chaos. I mean, from a police officer, from a medic, yeah. And chaos when people's lives are at stake. And so when I counsel people, and uh, and like you, people bring their crazy problems to me every day, every day. I always tell, listen, I'm an ER doc. We're not going to worry about what tomorrow is going to bring. We're not going to worry about next week or next month. We're going to operate right now. Like right now, the next 24 hours is all you have to worry about. When you break up life in 24-hour bits, then you don't have to worry and freak out about worrying. Even the Bible says worrying is practical atheism because in Philippians 4, 6, it says do not worry about anything. So I don't care about what's going to happen or could not happen. It most likely won't happen happen. three months from now or 10 years from now. I'm going to take care of Chris, my family, my career, my relationships right now and be thankful in the now. Be hoping for the future, but be thankful in the now because you're not guaranteed any of that. No way. And what happens is we get distracted in life and we lose that time that you open up the show with and you can't ever get it back. Can't trade it. Can't keep it. Can't store it. Can't keep it no matter what you do. Well, <laughs> you certainly can't store it or keep it. Yeah. You know, people always say, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make up for some sleep tonight. You can't do that. It no. doesn't work like no. that. <laughs> so yeah. I think that's awesome though. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah. Super impactful. Um, and, and just to, on, a, on a note, right? Yes. So you've been a servant all the time. I've always seen that, yeah. you know, showing up to our retreat and serving, showing up to our ice cream social and yes. serving, showing up at something else that has nothing to do with us and serving yeah. people. Yeah. Um, and you're high energy. You go, go, go. One thing, tell us one thing that people do not know about you. And I already know the answer. So oh, I hope you boy. say it. Well then I don't know. Give me a hint. Um, how many times in your life have you had alcohol in your body? Zero. Zero. I've never touched a cigarette. I don't drink. I'd be a fun drunk, though. I would be fun. I'd be the guy you'd want to hang with. I don't think I'm gonna, so. I'm telling you, I'd be that guy. <laughs> no, you But I, I, I will tell you, I think uh, the one thing that, that pushes my buttons is I love, I love second chances. I love watching people transform. I love being the guy that everybody comes to when the world's crashing down. That's my juice. Yeah. And that's why when it comes to faith... I serve as a faithful servant of God. When it comes to family, I serve as a loyal husband of one wife who's honoring his wife. When it comes to a father, father. When it comes to an Ironman athlete, when it comes to a bodybuilder, when it comes to education, I went and got a master's from U of M. For a kid who had no good high school experience, whatever I'm counseling on somebody, I want to have the I want to have the results to say it. So when people come to me, I know that's exactly why I sacrifice for that. So that's my juice. That's my so rocket you're just fuel. Pour, whatever you're doing, you're pouring into 100%. Uh, that's right. And I do it for the whole purpose of creating other people to follow in that same path. All right, let's go right back to where we were before this when you talked about anxiety, yep. right? I... I um, I get really, my thing is, I can't stand when people start talking about the weather. Yeah. Oh, Dang. the storm we were just can't supposed change it. to have. You can't change can't it. Can't change it. Can't change the oil prices. Can't change Washington. Forget about it. Operate in the now. Keep going. So for the listeners, 
you know, I always say it occupies mind space. Yeah. And people say, well, how do you do what you do? How do you remember all the stuff you remember? Yeah. How do you do all yeah. this stuff? Because I'm not thinking about all this other stuff. Clutter. That is meaningless. Yeah, brain clutter. Right? The weather is going to happen. Yeah. You're not going to control it. Right. Right? Um, I want to share one other thing. We talk about controlling our own situation, controlling our own thoughts or processes, controlling how we react to things. React. Because I think this is the other thing where people yep. can, can take something from today and implement it. How do you control your emotions? Because yeah. along those lines, people get so emotional in the moment of certain things. People get so emotional and worried about what might happen. Yeah. It goes back to self-discipline. And that, that emotion, when people say, well, that's just who I am, take it or lose it, you're undisciplined. You have no discipline. And I think discipline bleeds over to all parts of life, which is the reason why I still compete in Ironman, because that bleeds over and, and it seeps into all areas. Because discipline, it, it's not just 90% of your life. In 10%, you're undisciplined. It's either all or none. So when people fly off the handle, road rage, their kid makes them mad, their wife makes them mad, their job makes them mad, you're just undisciplined. You're a soup sandwich. And you let somebody get the best of you, and you're out of control. And when you're out of control, they're in control, and you have no control. So when I say control your emotions, that's part of training. You need to know what your triggers are. You need to know what could, brings you into that rabbit 100%. hole. 100%. And you need to be aware of it, put up your boundaries, keep away from that. There's people, I'm sure like you, that I don't talk about certain subjects with because I know it will it will conjure up emotion that I don't want to be a part of. And so we just don't talk about it. That's what I'm talking about. It all comes down to discipline. And for people that choose not to do that, they're undisciplined. Okay, last thing. Here's another thing that I see a lot, right? Um, and I'll give you two examples of it. People say, oh, man, it's going to be one of those days. Yeah. And I hear you just that. Decided. I'm here that I'm yeah. like, I'm like, would you quit with that crap? Yeah. Right? And so here's an example of it. This just yeah. happened. Um, you hear that all the time. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be one of those yeah. days. I go out to my car and I get yeah. ready to start the car. I'm late getting yeah. to the gym, 530 in the morning. The key's not in the car. I got to go back in the house oh it's gonna be one of those days yeah. or i go grab the key yeah glad that the lord led me back in the house so i can go kiss my wife goodbye one more time so mm. that is one thing that drives me crazy yeah. right we have those things the other thing is where people play the blame game right yeah. well it i was gonna do it but well it was his fault this is our kids right i mean our kids are nine yeah. and ten we're trying to teach them this right now you control everything you do so how can a listener that's used to that mindset, right? Because yeah. you know where it comes from? Somebody else. Yeah. It comes from their environment, right? So Contagious. besides get a, getting out of that environment, uh, how do we stop being the victim? Because here's what I know, because I've been a victim. Yeah. When you're a victim, you're not in control. Yeah. And when you're, you're in control, you can't be a victim. No. So that victim mindset, how do we yeah. help people get out of that? Well, it goes back to your decision. They decided to wake up and have one of those days. I decided to wake up and have a great day. There's people in cancer clinics right now that are absolutely full of joy. There's people that have no cancer and absolutely miserable. It's a decision. So when it comes back to emotional intelligence and emotional discipline, if you wake up, you're having those kinds of days because you asked for it. There's people that hate puppy breath and sunshine. I can't change that, but I know I'm going to decide that day how my day's going. But it's exactly what you said, Johnny. It's how you react to things. There's people that react to great things with no emotion when they should be joyful. People that act like everything's going down and the ship is sinking and nothing's wrong. I mean, it just, it comes down to the choice. And so what you do is you start with the small things, you know what, what your trigger is and you say to yourself out loud, you write it out. You have a partner saying, Hey, we're not going to, we're not going to do that. We're not going to, we're not going to go down that trail. We're not going to go down that hole. Just come on, pull back. And it becomes a discipline and then it becomes a habit. Awesome. So Chris Watson, yes. uh, the current sheriff. And uh, so obviously this isn't about just being a sheriff, but I want to share this story yeah. real quick. You're, uh, then I have to go. You're, you're succeeding, succeeding uh, yeah. Sheriff Paquel. That's right. Uh, who our backyards abutted one another. Yes, they and did. And his son, Brian, was yes. one of my best friends, who is now the circuit judge That's right. in Genesee County, who I had the blessing. Were you there? I was. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was asked to, what are they? I mean, Investiture. This, yeah, I mean, this word, I'm like, yeah. he says, do you want to do the investiture? I said, I'll yeah. invest in anything. <laughs> <laughs> but but that was awesome. That yeah. was a blessing to do that. And yeah. so to see this whole culmination of, you And know, who swore me in? Brian Paquel. Judge Brian Paquel. So awesome. Um, just amazing. Shout out to all the Paquels. We yeah, love you. Great family. I yep. know you're going to do big things. Right on. Um, there's no doubt about it. And look, you know, I don't know. You should vote for whoever you want to vote for uh, when the time comes. But if you want a servant, a leader, you know, just a true right on. human being. Thanks. Uh, grounded in faith with no bias towards anyone. Uh, that's your man right there. I know there. a guy. 
You know a guy? I know a guy. I know a guy, too. I know a guy. <laughs> How about that, man? I love you, brother. Hey, I just appreciate everybody. Appreciate the listeners. Thanks for taking the leadership role in making this podcast. Hey, man. God bless you, man. I love you. Give love me some you guys. Love. You're listening to the Thoroughbred Podcast, an elite business leadership podcast.